doe, a deer, a female deer, ray, a drop of golden sun, me, a name I call myself, far, a long, long way to run, so, a needle pulling thread, la, a note to follow, so, Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Kaz Rodriguez here, and we're going to be talking about how far is chopping? Is it too far? Is it not? But I'm here, we're going to find out with the drum department. You know, that was great with the accents. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the drum department. As you can clearly see, we have Kaz Rodriguez here, yeah. everybody. Hey. Let's get a round of applause. Let's go. Five years. Five years, uh, yes, it's the last years. time, yeah. And of course, Brandon's here. Yes. I'm here. And as Kaz so eloquently mentioned off the top, we're talking all about chops today. Mm. How far is too far? Question mark? Question mark. Mm. Question mark. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time here on the drone department, welcome. What we're going to do today is we do what they do, what us drummers do all the time. We get together, we talk about stuff about drumming, and but on this show, we put that stuff to the test. Mm. And chops is like, it's like our guiltiest pleasure thing out there. We crave it. We have to have it. Yeah. We need to know about it. Mm. But then we, when we use it, sometimes... We can get in trouble or we can overplay, but who decides all these things? So we want to talk about that. What we're going to do is we're going to discuss that mm -hmm. and then we're going to challenge Kaz to play some songs and see how far you can take them before they go absolutely <laughs> beyond. For better or for worse. Good taste. Because then, then we know. Then we know where that line is. Are we getting married is. with these tracks? Well, like, we'll for see. For better or for worse. How far it goes. <laughs> sickness and in health. Yes. What's going yes. on? Chops. Exactly. Chops. Till death do us apart. All right, apart. so first of all, we need to define what a chop is. What right. are chops? Kaz, what are chops in your summation? It always ends up depending on, on the situation. And I, and I, you know, I've seen many people say this in, in, in a realistic approach. I think for me, it's like, I like using chops for, in a musical approach. Mm -hmm. Will I use it on a gig? It depends on what gig it is. Right. I think if I'm playing with Josh Groban, probably not. Yeah. It's, a feel, it's a feel gig. If I'm playing with, uh, you know, if it was Shaka Khan, it may be in some respect, some places More need space. to have its moment. If I'm playing a jazz fusion or jazz jazz gig or something, there might have to be some elements of chopping. But what is chopping? Yeah, like, yeah. What know. defines a chop to you? Is that vocabulary? Is it the ability to play ideas? Yes, yeah, an ability to play ideas, to have a bit more freedom, mm -hmm. uh, to just have fun with the exploration, the the unknown, the unknown, ah. and discovering into a shift of you know, meters, like you have your one, two, three, and four. What can you do within this one, two, three, and four? Right. You know, exploring. Kind of opening up that space. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. Brandon, what do you think? To me, like, I've always felt chops are like, it's vocabulary, but how you string them, string those pieces together in different mm -hmm. ways, almost like an element of flow to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's cool. Like, even Aaron Spears, we asked him the same thing, and he, he kind of had a similar idea where it's, he looks at it as this box. Yes. And you can divide that box into as many smaller pieces yeah. or rates or meters as you want. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And I think it's interesting, that that's I think the thing, like, like chops, you ask 10 guys and girls, you're gonna get different answers each yeah. time. Oh, yeah. But there's still kind of that key element of, well, it's it's involving ideas and, 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 and phrases or musical ideas or yeah. rhythms. Yeah. Uh, but like you guys both said, I love that I, I kind of idea of a box or a space yeah. to mm. fill. Uh, yeah. But like you said, talking about like how, how you might break that up, 32nd notes, 64th notes, yeah. whatever. I think when you start thinking of it to that extent, that's where so many drummers get stuck mm -hmm. because they go, oh, well, 30 second notes. How many of those are in the bar? So if you're already thinking like that, you're not able to just react. Yeah. You're beyond able to, to add those ideas. Yeah. And who gets to decide when we've gone too far? Like, we 
have like our, the biggest ally we have with chops and knowing how to use them is mus- musicianship or musicality because a person could just play chops for the sake of playing chops it's not going to sound very musical at all like mm. you're done from day one right mm. Like even what you played off the top, do dear, it's kind of fun. There's no drums in that, right? <laughs> no. But you still, you still, you still withheld some restraint to be like, okay, well, this is over the top what I would play if I was yeah. playing with track, but it's still within the, in the realm of sanity. It's still yeah. like, oh, I, yeah. I know yeah. what's going on here, right? Yeah. Um, but it's it's funny how like with musicality though, and that 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 vision to mm-hmm. expand, you can really keep pushing and being like, oh, I'm, I can get a lot of stuff in here without getting in trouble. Yeah. Um, but who decides? Like, like I think you said, the, the gig decides, or it the does. the environment decides. Or Vinny Caliuta. Yes. Right. <laughs> the overlord. <laughs> the overlord of, of Chops. The, the master. Um, yeah. I think that's a good, interesting thing. And I think, like, it's just about ex- exploring of knowing, like, as you keep playing, you really start to discover to yourself what you feel is right and what is wrong. And I think... That was a thing for me when I was younger. Mm. I used to just think you could play chops over everything, mm. no matter what style of genre. And then it just becomes a thing where you're like, no, actually, this isn't meant for this. Mm. <laughs> and there are countless of musical directors that tell you, stop doing that. I was just going to say, <laughs> yeah. have you had an example of that where you, you got told not to? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, through my entire, like, not through my entire career, but when I was younger, uh, you know, when you're young, you're full of fire. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody that's a kid just wants to go like, oh, yeah, I just want to do this. Like, I want to put chops. I want to show people that I'm amazing. Mm. Uh, and then you have people like musical directors to ground you because they see the potential where you are, but they can also harness that. Yeah, it's, It helps you cultivate. Right. Like your 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 rage. <laughs> <laughs> Cultivate your rage. As you can see, I'm a very angry person. Yes. yes. All that pent up anger. Oh yeah. That's why he plays with Josh Groban to keep yeah. him calm. Uh, it Brandon, me. <laughs> have you had any 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 run-ins with chops? Um, you seem pretty respectful, so I I think I have a hard time thinking. Either. I feel like <laughs> like in the practice room all the time you put on something and just sure. overplay the the heck out of it. Yeah. But I don't know if any like crazy. Uh, like MD situations. Okay, yeah. I got beat up pretty good once. I was at a yeah. jam session, cutting my teeth, like eighteen. I know all these ideas. Went up and played some classic tune. I forget what it was, and I thought I was killing it, right? And then I get called up again later. Same bass player, who's a uh, very established pro in Vancouver. Still, I play with them now. And uh, I get up there to play, and just before I start, he puts his hand on the hi hat. He goes, "Hey, man." Um, let's play this one closer to how it sounds and how it feels. <laughs> and I was sort of like, I just, all the blood drained from my face. And I was like, oh. So then I'm like, totally off my game, totally scared. I'm like, and I think I probably played the money beat the entire time. Yeah, it's and, the way. And he pulled me over at the sa- afterwards. He's like, hey man, it's somewhere in the middle there. You got mm-hmm. it, but we just got to find it. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Yeah. But it's so valuable. And, and I, I was... Listening to something where Todd Zuckerman talked about this, because he plays a lot of notes, mistakes, mm-hmm. of course, and he chooses a lot of gigs mm-hmm. where he can play a lot of notes. Yeah. But he also plays the singer songwriters, Brian Wilson and his, yeah. his wife, Taylor Mills. And yeah. mm-hmm. he still manages to put these really creative, beautiful parts in. And He's a people, phenomenal. Yeah. But it's that musicality that gives him that license. Mm-hmm. Someone asked him, Do you do you do you ever get in trouble for overplaying? And he almost got, I don't want to say he was angry. Maybe mm. it's part of that that pent-up anger mm. for chops, <laughs> but he goes, <laughs> Yeah, he's like in what context? And yeah. he really defended mm. that point. And I thought that was really valid because it's all about finding ways to use those skills and have fun with them yeah. and still find a way to make it work. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's all well and good, right? Yeah. But what we're going to do today, we've got, I've got some examples queued up here um, and we're just going to see what happens. So some of these, <laughs> oh, actually these are all, I would say most of these are classic uh, kind of top forty songs from over the years. Okay. So I don't know. Have you ever played? Have you ever played in top forty band in your life? Yeah, I've played with like Rita Ora. Okay. No, no. I'm, I'm talking right. like wedding bands. Oh, or wedding bands. Casual gigs or anything like that in your life. Or did you did you surpass all of that in your career? Well, I kind of I used to do the wedding band stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you probably played the classics. We'll say. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. I was gonna yeah. say. Uh, so I think what we're gonna do the best way to really do this. <laughs> 
is you're scared. I can. This is I great. am. <laughs> you thought this morning was bad. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that are joining us, if you watched uh, yesterday's live lesson, which is brilliant, by the way. You very clearly explained how musicality was important when playing these things. Yeah. Today's episode is the literal opposite of all that. So. <laughs> it's the best part of this. So. You want me to do the opposite of Correct. That. Yes. Yes. Okay. We need to, you are going to set the standard for where we can go to as opposed to, well, that's really nice. Okay. We're going to uh, define how far is too far. Let's do this. <laughs> um... You know what? Let's start with that first song. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna jump around a little bit here because I, I have a lot prepared just in case. So uh, let's do the first one because this is a classic. If you want, what we'll do is play along with it the first time what you what feels right to you, and then we're gonna take another pass at it and see how far you can take it. All right, here let's we go. Do it. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Must stay Yeah, let's run that again. Let's oh. run about 20 seconds of that again from the top, and let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, exactly. Let's see what you can put in there. Oh, Your right. call, how far you want to take it. All but right. let's see what happens with this. Over so here we top. go again. This is Mustang Sally, <laughs> uh, the choppiest. Okay. Still make, it's still good. And then uh, uh, towards the end there, you're Sevens like... Sevens at the end. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now. <laughs> okay, we so had good. to start with a classic sort of like, you know, wedding band song. I thought that'd be a classic. Let's it's skip ahead. I want to try... Classic. Oh, I don't want to do that one. Let's do... Um, <laughs> you're in for a treat. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you can okay. throw some curveballs at me. <laughs> a little bit. Let's do um, the one called Europe. <laughs> Europe. Super simple. Mm. All right. Uh, you know what? Let's not bother with the uh, the open the, the 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 tasteful version. Let's just see where this takes you. I like I like putting you on the spot with this. So you just want me to just well, so you can start nice and comfortable, but see okay. where it goes. Okay. Uh, when you're ready, gentlemen, uh, let's cue up that song that involves Europe. <laughs> Here we go.
carried that toll. Mm. I love how far you took that. And man, going halftime with seven cars, I'm like, yes! That's going over the that's top. That's where the pit opens up. Yeah. yeah. Right but it get, it get, it, it's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I think hearing it when I was a kid, it's like, that's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, it went to, towards the end, it's like, stop playing. <laughs> Just stop. It doesn't make sense. It's interesting, but hey, I've seen a lot of people doing things like Tears for Fears and, and, right. and playing the the four against yeah. the six. But again, it's so good. We need two more. Uh, All right. See. Which one should I do? Should I do of these two? We're gonna do that one for sure. Yeah. What about those two? Which one do you want to do? Oh, give them that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> We're gonna do the one that involves the land. <laughs> the land. It's actually the one that's next. There you go. Yeah, for those of you wondering what I'm doing, I'm talking to our crew in the control room. <laughs> yes. so. uh, we didn't number these. I was like, ah, oh, we'll figure it out. We'll get yeah. there. Uh, all right, so this one, uh, I'm not going to give you any, any preamble. You may or may not know this song, so that could also be interesting. Okay. But, I mean, uh, I mean, the title not. works perfectly for this, so uh, let's go. Here we go. <laughs> What's that? Mm. Too much respect for Phil Collins. Yeah. Mm. I just couldn't play the... If I played a Phil, I was like, it's Phil. I heard his voice. You can't do it. I was like, mate, he's a fellow Brit. Can't, can't do it. I love that bop, bop. That was really, yeah. really tasty, though. My yeah. favorite thing about this is, though, like, we're putting on the spot here, yeah. everybody. So if you're out there wondering, what is he doing? He's literally reacting to these songs. He didn't even hear them beforehand. So uh, he's being a really great sport about this. Uh, he's smiling now. I'm hoping that continues. Um, but I mean, just the application of chops and ideas, there's like each, each one of these you've done just by stream of consciousness, yeah. you've had some really cool ideas. I think there's little things you'd definitely be able to use. Oh, thank you. Mm. Take, right? Thank you. I mean, yeah. when you were a kid, did you do this kind of stuff with, with tracks? I know I did. Yeah. I still do. Oh yeah. I still do. And I, it's always little things that I used to like, especially that kind of era. Yeah. I mean, I used to listen to like, you know, like, <sighs> I don't know if you heard of Nick Kershaw. Sure, yeah. Mm. So it was this song. Wouldn't uh, it be nice? The, yeah, but there's like the the Works album. Okay. Because I was obsessed with like Vinny and Jeff oh, Carr. Right. Mm. So finding out that Vinny was on that entire record and Jeff was on the only song that you would know him for is the shuffle. Yeah. And uh just Vinny playing on that record, I was like trying to emulate the stuff. It was all these electronic kind of sounds, but I was like, but it's Vinny doing all these cowboys and Indians. That's a yeah, um, yeah, yeah. To, oh, yeah. It's funny you should bring that up. You just brought to mind something. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with Sting, Ten Summoners Tales. Oh yeah, right. That's kind of a high watermark for a pop drumming record for a yeah. lot of folks. Oh yeah. That might be the best example of how you can put chops in mm. pop music to an extent <laughs> where it's. Almost invisible. Yeah. Yeah. Where you like, you know, all those drummers are like, oh, this sounds great. Then we went and learned it. We're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Man, so it's, true. It's in insane. Like, just the ideas and the flow of, of, of those sort of errors, especially that type of pop. Mm. Like, man, like Sting. Yeah, for sure. That was like still to my day is my dream gig. Sure. So, like, if you could play that stuff and obviously Heritage of Vinny and all those guys and stuff. And it's like, oh, Manu Kache. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah so I just good. imagine that being one of those drum chairs. You get the call. You sit there, like, thinking about all the guys that have had that gig before. You're like, <laughs> well, what am I going to bring to this? <laughs> I'm like that with Josh Groban. Right. Mm. Like, I'm sitting there going, Steve Jordan's on this record. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, he comes to a show, and then there's, like, you have Dave Desenzo, who was mm. the guy before. And really? Then, yeah. Dave was oh. playing it. One of my shout out to Dave because I, I love him. Yeah. I didn't One of my that. dear friends. The and man. then Gary Novak before that. And I was like, Well, that's crazy? heavy, 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 yeah. heavy. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, I'm fine. It's going to be fine. <laughs> it's going to be fine, you know. Uh, wow. Yeah. You just got to find your own space, though, yeah? Yeah. And that's what you mean. You get the gig because they see something in what you do. So oh, I love it. Nice All right, speaking of that, let's do the last track. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, oh, my God. I might get in trouble for this. We'll see what you happens. Gotta, you got to commit. I got to commit. You know what? I put him on the spot. I got to put myself on the spot, too. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Let's uh, run this last one. And let's see maybe what you think you might play mm. and maybe what you could play. Here we go. <laughs> and 99 years long. Come on. Maybe the heart of love in the face of a worry. Life has a way of rewriting the story. There were times when it looked like nothing could save them. There were times when it looked like nothing could break them. They keep promising each other what the future's gonna hold. When we look back down on 99 years of a wonderful life, when we laugh and we cry that our love is stronger with every fight, we've got to know what you would say I told you. And a million more on the run to say I love you. So let's look forward to you and I looking back. To 99 years of nothing that's broken. Live every day hoping that when we feel broken, our scars make us golden. We still choose you and I. When we look back down on 99 years of a wonderful life. When we look uh, I know, I was like, I'm just like, I'm you, sorry, Josh. No, I knew him mean to do that at the end. I served the music for the first time. I love you, Josh. I love you. Uh, put that on me, please. Oh, it's my fault. goodness. It was. I was like, so I, 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 first of all, I'm like, I, that's not, I'm just playing dirty by giving you that. But also. You, you got me there. I was like, click, click, <laughs> click, click. Oh, another set of clicks. <laughs> and I, then I heard Jennifer Nettles, and I was just like, hmm. Okay, Josh. All right, you guys. So good. Um, so thank you for doing that. <laughs> but I mean, you're like you're looking at me like, is this going to stop soon so I don't have to go to the end? Like, but but I think like what you did at the end reminds me of what what a lot of times I think guys do at sound check. Yeah. <laughs> it's like mm. okay, if it's good for sound, all right? Let's let's have a bit of fun with this. Usually, I I actually try not to do mm. that, but most of the time when we sound check, we just have. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I have a question about that. Okay, so that tune, yeah. there is, I would say, even though there's lots of big vocals happening, yes. in it, it's a very emotional song, yeah. um, there's lots of space yeah. for you. You could chop out in there. Like, you could go full on. Mm. Um, yeah. But not, I think it's probably, would you, is it fair needed. to say? Yeah, I was going to say, is it fair to say that there's more, you're actually able to say more with less in that case? Yeah, and, and the thing is, like, in terms of, so this is the question as we, we talk, the answer to this kind of what is too far. Yeah. With that song in general, it's like, I anyone can do this beat and just right. do the... But I'm not, I'm not just doing that. I'm listening to the song. So like me bringing chops, ch my chops is like, the musicality. 100%. Mm. What am I bringing into the, yep. the song? So 
So with this record, it would be like, okay, I'm going to bring the triggers. Which, right. Which okay. I play the sample because I have so many snare sounds. My snare is usually triggered lower. It's, it's tuned lower. Right. So just an example, the whole difference is this. You just heard that groove. Now hear it like this. And all I'm doing is loosening the hi-hats mm -hmm. slightly. Mm -hmm. And it's... got weight and that that snare uh triggered sample that you're you're pulling off that too is long enough that it's, like yeah it, it's going to keep you from wanting to fill that space because yeah. it's it, got that duration exactly so that bringing my chop is actually here oh, i love it <laughs> this is this is my focus this is the <sighs> weight like i mentioned on my live stream oh, i love the that. weight comes from the hi-hat so that, mm. that that's a uh, my chop that's that. literally you boiling down. It's like taking all that stuff yeah. that you did, you're putting all that same energy oh, yeah. into mm -hmm. the hi-hat. Just on there. Let That's... your rage into the hat. <laughs> it's a love song. It's a, it let, is, your, yeah. let your rage into the hi-hat. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, we're on that song. Is that a song where you did experiment with ideas or did you just sort of like, did you know right off the top, okay, this is going to be a quarter note, 16th note, eighth note exclusive song. I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, it was just that with Phil's, it was just super simple. And the only part that was like really uh, choppy was just the bridge where right. it went into, where it was just dun dun ga, do good, do good, dun ga. Awesome. <laughs> it's as easy as that. So cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to do something we like to call here blast beats. Okay. So, what this is, no, you don't Good have to do any blast beats. Luck. I promise right. you that. <laughs> so, we're going to do Brandon everybody out again, there, everybody oh out there on, uh, uh, on YouTube. Uh, so, Kaz has to answer 20 questions in 60 seconds. If he manages to do that, we're going to give away a prize to someone on YouTube. So, I'm just going to pull up the questions here. What are we going to give away? Uh, we're going to give away three pairs of Drumio drumsticks by Vader. Nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So let's bring up the beautiful, you saw it earlier, the fancy <laughs> clock. See that? We spare no expense on our clock for this. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So here we go. I'm going to count down and I'm just going to start rifling questions. Are you ready? Take a moment. Go. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Nylon or wood tip? Let me turn that down. I can't, I can't hear. It's okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let's start that again. <laughs> I'm going to start that again because that music just. <laughs> All I heard was three, two, one, go. Bah, 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 bah. Too okay, much pressure. Uh, no deader. <laughs> no deader. Let's do Please it again. stand by. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay. Music, is that in, under the music? It will be under music, yes. yes. Okay. Right. Okay, here we go. So this is 60 seconds for 20 questions. Let's do it. Blast beats with Cass. Here we go. Three, two, one. Nylon tip or wood tip? Uh, wood tip. Favorite place on the planet? Lake Cascade. Ooh. Heal up or heal down? Heal up. Who are you listening to right now? Uh, Mars Volta. Ooh. Coded or clear drum heads? Coded. Artist you want to work with? Sting. Symbols, clean or dirty? Dirty. Golf or tennis? Tennis. Pedals, chain, strap, or direct drive? Chain. TV or movies? Movies. How many snare drums is too many? Never. White wine or red wine? Red. Single or double pedal? Single. Flying or driving? Driving. Are concert toms still cool? Yes. Suit or t-shirt? Suit. Lacquer or wrapped drums? Lacquer. Steak or seafood? Steak. Vinyl or streaming? Vinyl. And the last question, is Kaz short for kazoo? No. Okay. Nice. Well, you did it. Congratulations. Ugh. Man, I, I still just keep coming back to the concert time question. Yeah. yeah. Everyone has said they're cool. I think of so. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Snare drums has been varied quite a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, streaming and vinyl has been pretty varied too. Sting is the number one choice though for who to work with. Yeah. Well, so, Sting, if you're out there, there's a lot of guys. Yeah. Sting, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. I'm also British. <laughs> ah. And I'm an Englishman in LA. Oh. No, an Englishman in New well York. <laughs> Maybe okay. you gotta move. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna give away a prize to someone on YouTube. It's gonna be three pairs of Drumio drumsticks. Congratulations to Wumpus.
What a name. Congrats. Wumpus, please email me at krad at drumeo.com. You will get a set, three sets of Drumeo drumsticks sent to you wherever you are on the planet. Send me your address and we'll get that taken care of right away. I'll also give you, I'll, I'll give you one of my signatures. Oh, cool. Look at that, a bonus prize. Thank you, Thank you Kaz. You. All right, up next we have something we like to call um, Groove of the Week. Mm-hmm. And we recently switched this format from one that we teach to highlighting drummers mm-hmm. uh, that are doing amazing things and checking out some of their grooves. Uh, you mentioned you knew this drummer. So it's Ramon Montagne, I think oh, is yeah. how we pronounce that. Oh yeah, this Beast. guy. Uh, if you folks aren't familiar with Ramon, he's got two books out right now. He's like a master in push-pull technique, which has become a really uh, big thing these days. A lot of the folks are loving that. Um, so one book is called Rhythmic Imagination Studies for the Development of the Push and Pull Technique. And he just released a book with Mr. Murder Hands himself, Alex Cohen, called nice. <clears throat> Extremely, <laughs> Extreme Polyrhythm Coordination and Speed Techniques. Oh, yeah. This is not for the faint of heart. No. Oh, no. But my goodness, what an inspiring drummer. He does really cool stuff with like four drumsticks. Four drumsticks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I want to share this clip I pulled of him doing some crazy push-pull stuff along with a metronome. Uh, check out this clip of our Groove of the Week, Ramon Montagne. Three and four and one and two and Just like nothing, yeah, too. It's just so smooth. It's it's amazing. Like, I actually, you know, I got to speak to him on 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 Instagram, and and I said to him, "Man, you are phenomenal." I didn't realize he was following me, oh. and he was like, he's like, "Oh, you know, like it's nice to meet you." Like, to, uh, it's like thanks thanks for your kind words, master, or something like that. And I was like, <laughs> "Dude, you are the master. I'm. I want lessons from this yeah. guy." Ramon is so incredible. His approach of like, this is the thing, it's like the chops. What mm. is too far? This guy is playing rhythms that people don't think about. And, it, yeah. and totally. it's musical. Yeah. His musical approach is, is, is phenomenal. Ramon, man, you yes. are incredible. Yeah, and if anybody out there has any drummers they want to see highlighted on Drumio, we're looking for all kinds of things yeah. to share. So yeah. email me, krad at drumio.com with any drummers that inspire you. They might make it to Groove of the Week. You never know. Mm-hmm. But please go check out Ramon. Uh, I think I don't, that our screen down there is not working, but I imagine we're going to have that lower thirds with his Instagram handle. So please go uh, check out Ramon. Uh, follow him. Maybe and, uh, send him a quick note. Please. And the new book with uh, Alex. Yeah, yeah, the new book just came out. also a beast. Alex yeah. Cohen. Oh, yeah. goodness me. Both of those guys. Yep. Yeah, if you're into like getting deep into polyrhythms and yeah. coordination and just like incredible hand technique, uh, both absolutely phenomenal at it and great teachers too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, time to talk about our student of the week. One of the things we love to do here mm-hmm. is celebrate our students. Yes. Uh, and so our student of the week this week is Jailhouse Alley. <laughs> I believe she works in a jailhouse. Not currently in a jailhouse, oh, so wow. to speak. Yeah, so I think she works there. Uh, she says, I'm a late starter to drums, but she's wanted to play since she was 12. Also wanted to learn to play the piano. That's great. Kaz, mm-hmm. you know a thing or two about playing the piano. What's that? You know a thing or two about playing the piano. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I play piano. I play keys. You write symphonies. He does. I do. Yeah. Well, uh, that's great. Yeah. Um, during the pandemic, uh, Ali wasn't working much, so she decided to join piano, and that changed everything. Nice. And, you know, she tried guitar, but then she realized, you know, I, I kind of want to play the drums. Yeah. That's where we all end up. I think so. Oh, yeah. I think she made the right choice. For sure. Back uh, to home base. Yeah. So <laughs> she's like, you know what? I, I decided to see if anybody can learn to play the drums. And they said, yes, uh, we believe you can. Uh, and uh, so she uh, decided, okay, I'm going to do that. She does practice other instruments as well. But uh, uh, her favorite drummer isn't someone famous, but his name is George Johnston, uh, oh. who lived in Malta and was the person who inspired her at 12. That's mm. really cool. That's brilliant. You never know when you might inspire somebody. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Uh, all right, so everybody, let's see. This is a video of Jailhouse Alley playing some, I think it's Queen. Ooh, let's nice. check it out.
Congratulations, nice. Ali. That's awesome. Amazing, Ali. You are a champion. <laughs> <laughs> you are a champion. That Kaz was amazing. bobbing his head the whole time. I was like, he was. Totally true. Yeah, Unsolicited good. too. You're doing that all by yourself. Yeah. yeah. I didn't say Kaz, move. Yeah. Not that you would listen. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Ali. And I want to also say, if you want to be part of our drumming community, it's not just all the cool things we do on YouTube, the beautiful lessons that Brandon produces, and the insane stuff I do. Uh, <laughs> there's all kinds of other great stuff inside our members area. Kaz is shooting some stuff right now yes. uh, that we're going to have out soon. Uh, but come check us out. We have a free seven-day trial. So all you got to do is there's going to be this cool graphic that comes up on the screen like magic. Check us out at drumeo.com slash trial. And off you go. Yeah. Seven days of what we offer. It includes piano, guitar, and singing as well. So if you want to check out those things while you're learning the drums, just like Ali's doing, you can do that. Yeah. All right. Last thing we're going to talk about. So one of the things we love to do here is talk about gear. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, love before gear. we even get into the gear this week. I want to talk a little bit about some of the cool stuff you have in your kit, if that's okay. Mm, yeah. Be loud? Cool. All right. Yeah. So you've got some cool, interesting symbols that you're running here. Yeah. Um, these hi-hats, <laughs> they've got giant hammer marks, and they have rivets on the top of the darn thing. Yes. And some jingles. Is that? And some jingles. Oh, the jingles in the bottom, the bottom too. Yeah. I don't so, know if Jesus can get in there on those. That's really, really cool. Yeah, these are, these are like uh, super, super, like, old... Like, I've, I've had these for like five years now, five, okay. six years. You can see you like them a lot. Mm. Them oh, a lot. yeah. I mean, I used to play these a lot in, in my studio because of just the interesting stuff that I could get out of it. It's really dry, but washy at the same time when I yeah. open it. But I like the activation of the jingles just being subtle. And I have rivets on the top, and they're clustered. And I think the 14s, I have them in 15s and 16s as well. So cool. I just, I just, this is just for more the quick thing. It's not, nice. it's not overpowering. It just sounds really cool. And the mm. sticking on it on the top. Yeah, not too bright. Really kind of the cross between dirty and sweet at the same time. Yeah, mm. it's, a, it's a mix of both. And I just, I'm in love with these. And I'm glad I got them back from, from London. And mm. yeah, these are just amazing Zildjian, Zildjian uh, prototypes. <laughs> but, they're, but they're just... If I you folks out there like how those hi hats that ride and the ride sound, let Zildjian know. Yeah, let yeah, them know. Tell them that, that you want Kaz's symbols. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's it. All right. So uh, every week we like to uh, show off a piece of gear. Yeah. And uh, this week we've got a piece of gear from our friends at AF. Now, what you all need to know is this is in no way sponsored. They just send stuff for review, whether we like it or hate it. We're going to mm. do it and we're going to do it live right now. Mm. And we're going to give this. Prize, or we're going to give this away as a prize at the end. So what we've got out today, uh, I think Jesus can get a shot at it. It's there on the 18-inch bass drum. Uh, this is called the AF Kickbone. AF is really great at designing, creating things that you can add to your kit. They don't just make really cool drums and interesting hardware, uh, though I would guess you would call this an interesting piece of hardware. You'll notice it's attached to both ends of the drum, but it allows you to put things right on top of your bass drum. And you'll notice there's like this crazy jingle set there. Uh, that jingle set is part of the kick bone. And that is made by uh, the um, big fat snare drum, of course. Mm -hmm. But there's a little Velcro pad there. So you can actually put anything on there. They, you, it also comes with these really cool snare wires. See these? There's an issue with this. There's an issue. Did we, uh, lose, did we lose the double pedal? Yeah. <gasps> oh my goodness, I can <laughs> see that from here. I would need a Tyson. That's hilarious. Somebody. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I could play it, but oh I could just a beatbox the sound it makes. Yeah, right. This is great. Uh, it just needs to be. We're gonna take attached. care of this while we're talking. This is great. So yes. yeah, let's stay on me for a minute. Uh, so we've got this. Uh, so these these little Velcro things. So this is a set of snare wires, obviously. So you could turn your bass drum into a snare drum, Brandon. I'm sure you would love that. That'd be cool. Yeah, especially I mean, on like an 18 or something. Yeah. Coated head. Yeah. And then, of course, as an external muffler, because a lot of us like running small bass drums. Mm -hmm. but we like running them. Wide open, but sometimes you want to just knock that back a little without yeah. being a pillow in the drum or anything like that. So it does come with this cool, this is like a really tight kind of felt one, uh, like small disc. And then if you want that sort of like, if you've got a bigger drum, like a 22 or a 24 or a 26, you can use one like this. But the cool thing is, I haven't done it yet. We're going to have to do this. Maybe we'll dedicate a drum department episode on what type of things can we put on the kick bone. Mm. Because basically, it's like anything Velcro. So we could kind yeah. of R David R the situation, Jeez. maybe put like... <laughs> Shaker eggs out there in YouTube and, and in the members area. What would you think? What's the wackiest thing we could attach to a uh, 
um, kick bone and try to put on the front of the bass drum head. Any ideas? I could try uh, attaching wow. those uh, boiled goat toenails. Oh, that to the you bass like drum. those? The those cha-chas. Are cool, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think, a set of maracas maybe. Yeah. Or oh, how about wind chimes? <laughs> Clean. That would be something. <laughs> That'd be fun. Or just some like scrap metal. Old yeah. keys. Yeah. Is that cool? Maybe maybe we go all the way with this. <laughs> we we combine this with last week's episode. And we like take a stack mm. and put it on there. So it's like a bass drum stack. Put it to the test. Like all right. That. Sorry about that, guys. No, that's great. <laughs> and what a wonderful job by our crack team of engineers and assistants. Shout out to Jesus and Jack. Jesus and Jack, thank you. And uh, for Taras for running in here and making sure we were framed up. Love it. Thank you, Legends. guys. Okay. So uh, so let's get back to the kickbone, shall we? So you'll notice it's set up there with a kind of a tambourine sort of drum head thing. That's what's Velcroed on there right now. So that's just a straight up 18 inch bass drum. Kaz, you want to hit that for us a couple times? Ooh. That's Groove, maybe show us how that might suit. Super that, cool. That sounds awesome. Yeah, oh, pretty cool. I would totally use that. Now that will fit any bass drum size, literally. <laughs> like you could yeah. have an eight-inch bass drum, you could have a twenty. I guess maybe it ends at like twenty-two or twenty-four. Yeah. I don't know who has a twenty-four-inch long bass drum, and whoever has a twenty-four-inch long bass drum probably doesn't want to put that on it. I'm nope. <laughs> uh, nope. But uh, yeah, so uh, we're gonna give this away. Uh, if you ever want to buy yourself one, though, you can. A uh, and F. Uh, it is. It's not cheap. No? They make great stuff. <laughs> no? It's no, quality it's stuff. Uh, $289 USD. Wow. But that does give you all that freedom. Maybe we'll find out what bizarre things we can attach to it later on. But it will yep. come with, the one we're going to give away, it comes with a set of the snare wires, these two mufflers, and of course that lovely uh, big fat snare drum tambourine thingy that uh, Kaz just played. Nice. Uh, we're going to give that away to one of our members. So let's Ooh, see. Man. Kaz, I'm going to need your help with this. What do you uh, need? I need a number between one and seven. Well, my favorite number is seven. Seven. Okay, great. What do we got, Kyle? Uh, we're going to go with Alex underscore drummer. Congratulations, nice. Alex underscore drummer. You, sir, have won this awesome kickbone. Uh, email me at krad at drumu.com. We'll get that sent out to you right away. Uh, yeah, I, I would totally own one. For $300 US, would I buy it? I have to think about it pretty harsh, but yeah. I could see like if I had a gig where I needed like lots of vibe, I, yeah. I think I might do that. Yeah, if you're look... doing like a lot of acoustic style stuff, yeah. I know lots of people bring like a cajon with tambourines and stuff yeah. that could be super useful. Yeah, like you'd have to want to use it all the time, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's certainly classier than just like gaffing stuff to front mm -hmm. of face. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, it's a cool, cool little thing. And of course, this uh, episode of the drum department would not be complete if we did not give away a one year's membership to Ooh. someone out there in the YouTube land. The YouTube. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, and by the way, the chat's been spicy today. Oh, has. Yeah. has oh been? my goodness. The uh, as you can spicy. expect the as you can expect the uh, debate on chops rages on. Mm. Oh yeah. Yes. We still haven't solved it. No, we have not. No matter <laughs> how hard we try. You can uh, never. You, it's it's always going to be an unsolved thing. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's always debatable. Yeah. Uh, all right, Kaz. Let's do another one. How about one between one and fourteen? Whoa. Okay. Let's do. 13. 13. Very cool. Uh, we're going to go with Joe Vargas. Nice. Congratulations, Joe Vargas. Email me at krad at drumeo.com. We'll get you set up with a free one year's membership to Drumeo. That, of course, will include piano, to guitario, and singio. And uh, come hang out with us for a year. We'd love to have you. Everybody else out there, thanks so much for hanging out today. I have to thank, of course, your brands. You've got Tama. Yep. Tama, Tama, depending on how we pronounce Zildjian, it. Zildjian, Remo, Audio Technica, uh, Roland. Roland, yeah. Mm. How much is that? LP Percussion. Yeah. I play LP. Yeah. Mm. I do I play LP. And yeah, just uh, thank you, Drumeo, for, for having me. Thanks for being such a great support today. Yeah, this man. has been great. It's great. No Brandon, worries. thank you as always being voice of reason. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you to the Mediation. crew. Thanks. Yes. Uh, next week, we have another entertaining episode coming up with Grace and the Crutman. We do. Uh, if you thought this was wacky, wait to see what we have planned for next week. Uh, well, stay tuned, everyone. We'll see you next week. Otherwise, get back there and play those drums. See ya.